Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where we're going to be showing you how we can modify the translation and rotation components of entities using the entity component system. Now this video is exciting because we're not going to be using any mono behaviors at all. We're going to be using pure ECS. So we're going to have entities on the screen which have data components associated with them, which in turn are affected by systems to translate and rotate our entities. If you find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, you might be interested in the video that I recently made where I recreated the classic Unity Rollerball tutorial using dots and ECS. That video does a good job at showing you the basics of how to create a project using dots and ECS, and it can show you how the concepts of this video apply on the broader scale of a full project. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on the data oriented technology stack and entity component system. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. And if you do want to download the project files featured in today's video, make sure you use the link right down in the description. All right, so here I am over in Unity 2019.3, and at the time of recording, Dots is still in the preview phases, so I have these preview packages enabled. Be sure to enable those if you'd like to follow along. All right, so here's the basic scene that we're working with. So you see that I have these four plane game objects um, that all have the convert to entity components on them. So when we hit play, these game objects will all be converted to entities. I also have this sphere here with a nice little basketball material on it. And I don't have a rigid body or anything on it like that because I don't want this to be interacting with physics. I'm basically in this video, I'm just gonna be showing you how to modify the translation components so we can kind of get the sphere to float around the stage much like this. Also, I'm gonna be showing you how we can apply some rotation to it so we can just kind of have it rotating around like this. All right, so as a best practice organizational thing, I have this scripts folder and under it, I have a data components folder and a systems folder. So we're gonna start in the data components folder and we're gonna create our first data component. So we'll just go to create a new C sharp script and we can just call this movement data because this is gonna hold all the data related to the sphere moving around. All right, so we can go ahead and open this up and I'm just gonna clear out everything. We're just gonna start from a nice fresh clean project. This is probably the easiest to do with these data components. Components. So the libraries that we're going to include are uh, the Unity Engine as well as uh, Unity.Entities. So now here we're actually going to be making a public struct called Movement Data. So instead of a class, it's going to be a struct, and it's going to be implementing the I component data interface. And then here is where we can define all the variables that we want for this movement data. So of course, we're going to want a public float variable for the movement speed. We can also do another public float variable for the rotation speed. Then after that, we can do a couple public key codes for the forward key, the back key, the left key and the right key. So this is basically all the stuff that we need in our data component. This is just kind of defining the variables that we're gonna be accessing from our system. And the one last thing that we need to do is just go ahead and add this generate authoring component tag. And this is going to allow us to attach this data component to a game object, and then we can edit these values through the Unity editor. So I'll show you what I mean by that right now. So just go ahead and save this, and then come back over to Unity. Now you're gonna go ahead and select the sphere, and then and we'll just drop this movement data component onto it. And you'll see that we can start to edit things like the movement speed. So for example, we want the movement speed to be like five. Uh, for rotation speed, we can maybe make this like 25. For the forward key, let's do W. Uh, the back key, we'll do S. For the left key, we can do A. And the right key, we'll do the D key. So just a typical WASD layout. Um, so if we go ahead and hit play, we'll enter play mode. And of course, all the game objects have disappeared and they're now showing up within the entity debugger. And then if we go into our scene, you see that we can press the W, A, S, and D keys. However, nothing is happening. And that is because we don't have a system in place for our actual movement system. So we're gonna go ahead and implement that now. So over in our scripts folder, we go to the system subfolder and we can go ahead and create a new C-sharp script and we can just call this our movement system. 
Once again, just go ahead and open that up and we're gonna be including a few new libraries. So we'll be using unity.entities, of course. Next one we'll need is unity.jobs. After that, we'll need unity.transforms. And then lastly, we're going to be using unity.mathematics. And so now we can just go ahead and clear out the start and update function because we do not need that. And instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we're going to inherit from the job component system. Now you'll see that when we inherit from the job component system, we're getting a little bit of an error. So if we click on this, we can do alt enter and enter, and then it will automatically add in this on update function here. Now this on update function is very similar to a regular update function. It's just going to iterate through all the code every single frame. And this is where we're gonna be doing our movement and rotation systems. So the first thing we're gonna need a reference to is a float variable called delta time and we'll set this equal to time dot delta time and the reason we store this as a variable is because right now we're going to be doing a lambda expression and from within that lambda expression we can't get time dot delta time like this so we can just store this in a variable so now in our lambda expression what we're going to do is we're going to go to entities dot for each so this is going to iterate through all the entities that meet these specific conditions so so we have to do a, a second set of parentheses here and we're gonna say ref translation, which we can call translation. And then we're going to do another reference for rotation, which we can call rotation. And lastly, we're gonna do an in movement data, which we can call movement data. Now essentially what this means is the code's gonna iterate through all the entities with a translation component, a rotation component, and a movement data component. Now the difference between the ref keywords, which we have on translation and rotation, and the in keyword on movement data is how we access them. So ref means that we can read and write to the translation component, same for rotation component, and the in keyword means that we can only read from the movement data component. And we do this in keyword because we actually don't need to write any data to the movement data. We're just seeing what the speed is and what keys are being used to tell the sphere where to go. So we just need to read this data. We don't need to write anything back to it. So the next thing we're gonna do in this Lambda expression is after this first end parentheses, we're gonna do an equal sign and then an arrow like this. And we're gonna do an open and close these curly braces. And then here we can actually go ahead and separate these out onto their own lines. And then we'll just do a semicolon at the end for now. So here is where we can check if any of our movement keys have been pressed. So we'll say if input dot get key passing in movement data dot forward key. So this is if the forward key is being pressed. So we'll do translation dot value dot Z plus equals. So we're going to add to what's already in the translation component. We'll get our movement data dot movement speed multiplied by our delta time. And so this is basically all we need to do to get the sphere moving forward. Um, a few other quick little things we need to do at the end of this Lambda expression, we just need to do a dot run. And then after that, we can just return default. And then so that gets rid of the error on the on update function. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and save this and go back to Unity and I can just demonstrate this basic system that we have running here. So we'll hit play, and once it enters play mode, when we hit the forward key, which we set to W, you'll see that the sphere starts moving forward. However, we don't have any of the other keys set up, so we can just go ahead and set that up now. And so I'm just gonna speed through this real quick because we're basically just checking for input and then applying movement in the proper direction. All right, so once we have all that complete, we can just go ahead and save this and head back over to Unity. And you'll see when we hit the play button here, we can continue to move forwards and now we can move backwards and left and right. And we can pretty much just move our little sphere wherever we want to in these directions. So now real quickly, I'm just gonna show you how we can make the sphere constantly rotate. So what we're gonna do in this case is we're going to be modifying the rotation component. So we'll say rotation.value is equal to math.mul and we'll pass in the current rotation.value as the first parameter. And for the second parameter, we'll do a quaternion dot rotate x. It's gonna rotate around the x axis. And in here we'll pass math 
dot radians, passing in the movement data dot rotation speed multiplied by delta time, and then just semicolon at the end and save it and we can come back to unity and we'll just hit the play button here and you'll see that the sphere begins to rotate around its x-axis and you'll see that when we use the w a s and d keys we can still roll around or move around rather and you'll see that it's still just continually rotating here now one interesting thing about how the entity component system works is let's say if we were to select this blue plane here and then we go and add this movement data component onto it well we can you know set a movement speed say we'll set a movement speed of 10 uh, we'll set a rotation speed of 50 and we can even set up the forward back left and right keys so now when we hit the play button here you'll see that the plane begins to rotate it actually kind of disappeared because you can only see one side of it but you'll see that there it is again it's you know continually rotating around if i keep the camera on it we can always see it here but um because we applied that that movement data component to this plane, it's now being affected by that system. So actually, when it comes back, we can hit the W, A, S, and D keys and the plane starts to move around with the sphere. So that's kind of one of the quirks with the entity component system is if you just add a simple data component, you know, things could start being affected by systems and that may be something that you want or maybe something that you don't want. So just keep an eye on that. And so that is how we can modify the translation and rotation components of entities using ECS. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you found it helpful, make sure you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on the data oriented technology stack and Unity entity component system. Don't forget to watch my Unity rollerball tutorial so you can see how the concepts in this video apply on the broader scale of a full project. And of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.